Hey everybody, welcome to the Chive Podcast. We're closing out the year with two Austin-centric podcasts with some very uh, as, uh, accomplished people here yeah. in Austin. Yeah, man. And I'm excited about the fact that we have Vince Young here in the office, one of our friends. You are... Why do you have his age? Who cares? I'm not going to oh, announce his uh, age. Uh, like, it's just a... a, a but, <laughs> we have the BCS National Championship winning quarterback from UT, former NFL quarterback for the Titans. Now you're a businessman. You've you know, everything from the Vince Young Steakhouse, which we'll, we'll talk about right away. It's one of my favorite restaurants here in Austin, to any number of, of things that you're doing uh, around Austin, which is what I really want to want to get to because we freaking love Austin. <laughs> and you are you are Austin's favorite son now if you've never seen vince young walk into any public establishment <laughs> in austin or houston it goes like this vince young can't hide his height you know <laughs> like some famous people yeah. they do the they do the marvel comic superhero thing where they put on the hoodie uh-huh and L the hat little hat little hat yeah. and then no one knows that's captain america <laughs> yeah you know exactly who Vince Young is when he walks into Austin. You're like, you are sort of like a, a god here. I, I'm not just saying that. I've seen you walk into a place and you just get mobbed. Yeah. Yes. I said a beetle of Austin. You're a beetle of Austin. <laughs> well, appreciate but that. But you're so good the way you handle yourself. I've been in situations, and, and we didn't meet officially till a, a month ago, but I've seen you four or five times, and you handle people with poise and grace. Oh, yeah. When did you learn? Some people don't. Well, I mean, it's just Southern hospitality. You just respect everybody, you know. And, and me, I have opportunity in my 33 years. 33-year-old. <laughs> 33-year-old. 33, yeah, 33, <laughs> 33 years young, man. So. You know, I, I know why he said that. But, yeah, uh, to have opportunity to be around some really, you know, some, some big-time celebrities from the Snoop Dogg, to Queenie Tiffus, to a lot of really, really respected people around the world that I respect as well. Mm -hmm. And when I get around these guys or, or these ladies like Regina King, you know, for them to even stop and just give a, a handshake and just to say hello, take a picture, I mean, I'm looking at myself like, who you think you are, you know, yeah. if you can't do that. So, you know, myself, how I'm raised, for one, I, you got to respect people. And then me being from Texas, it's just Southern, man. We we go about, about you know, respecting people and the hospitality of making sure, are you okay? And uh, thanks for, you know, first of all, acknowledging me that you see me. And then second of all, we want to definitely, you know, do what we can and put a smile on any, somebody's face. Dude, man. man that's... And you don't get that everywhere, man. No, you don't. I moved no. into Texas. <laughs> the first thing that happened is my neighbors brought me a thing of Tiff's Treats cookies. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And literally, I, they've done countless things for me. I left my, uh, I left my garage door open once, <laughs> and they literally called me at the office, and they apologized to me. They said, I'm sorry, I went into your house, and I closed your garage door, and I ran out. I apologize. <laughs> they, I just hope you know, didn't want to get I touched. saw your cars were gone. I was like, wow, that's Texas for you, man. That yeah, Tip great. Tree is one of my, my, my teams right there that I'm very a part of in the business world with. Really? Are you uh, really? Yeah, I got some shares in Tiff Street, so... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, those are... Th that's the best cookies. That's yeah. the best cookie in the world. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> my brother's wife's name is Tiffany, and she likes to bake things. Yes. So when we first moved to Austin, everybody kept coming up to me like... <laughs> Tiff Street. Tiff Street. Yeah. For a whole year, I thought that my brother's <laughs> wife was making the most delicious delivered warm cookies in all of Austin. <laughs> and I finally was like, Tiffany, you've really taken it next level. Can we talk about your snickerdoodle game? And she's like, what the fuck what are you, you talking about? about? I'm like, don't what the fuck me. You've been bringing cookies in the office here. Your Tiff treats has for John, a year. Has he been drinking she thought, again? Yes. She thought I stayed too late at the fair. Like, she's like, what is wrong with you? So yeah. shout out to Tiff treats. I, and yes, Tiffany. That's something you got uh, in on? Yeah, I had to. I grew up at, I mean, on a university, you... You was either eating Tiffany treats or pluckers when you was growing up. So when I was growing up, I had opportunity to come on campus and go to school here. That's all we ate was. Do they do the uh, chicken and waffles thing? I've never tried that combo. That's like really powerful. For Tiff treats? No, no, no. no, no. For <laughs> pluckers. For pluckers? <laughs> no, for pluckers. Because pluckers is chicken. No, no, I'm dead serious. Yeah. Like, that's a big thing here in Austin, and mm -hmm. I've yet to try it. Yeah, and everybody tells me it's stuff. like the, the best. best. It's the best. You've tried it. So the best. Have you tried it? It's good? Is this worth I all eat. the hype? 
Yeah, I eat, so oh, trust yeah. me. All right. I got a All list right. of stuff that you want to go bucket. try out. <laughs> yeah. Before we get to present day Vince Young, present day 33 year old Vince Young, yeah. 33. We want to take okay. it back and uh, to your childhood, and we're gonna get into the fact that you were hit by a car, oh, a yeah. truck, apparently when you were seven years old. <laughs> but uh, before that, you were born in Houston, and and we'll, you have a holiday named after you on that's coming up January 10th. I don't, we'll get into that in a second <laughs> yeah. too. You're. Uh, Describe your roots in Houston. Did you have a good childhood? Because in ways, I feel like some of it was good, some of it wasn't, wasn't so good. Yeah, it was up and down. You know, um, not having a father figure. You know, being a little boy at a household, seeing drugs, mom strung out on drugs, people always coming up your house to eat up all the damn food. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, that's that's my hot dog, not your hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's guy. That's guy code, right? Yeah, there, for man. the rest of the week, that's what we had. So you know, we wasn't you know one of those family that was very you know had a lot of money. We had to kind of, you know, ends with me. I mean, whatever we had, that's what we had. And, and then when it's gone, it's gone to the next paycheck. So we had to do what we had to do as a family. Uh, myself, I had to grow up pretty fast. I had to cut grass, wash, wash the neighborhood car. So, you know, I'm washing one car and one of my neighbors walked by, come see me two days. So, <laughs> I, you know, I was one of those kids in the hood that, you know, kind of had to hustle on my own to kind of help bring it in me for the family. Then I worked for Just for Feet. It's not even around no more. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Just for Feet. It was what a shoe store. Oh, okay. It was a shoe store, and it's not even around no more. So in the summertime, I did that, wash cars and things like that. So I had to grow up pretty fast, and it was rough. But hey, you know, it kind of taught me a lot of different things. Is so. it? Do you, what do you think about Houston in general? I'm always a little. It's a bit of an enigma to me. Like yeah. I literally, I was talking about how when we first went there. There, the restaurants downtown Houston, they just like close at five o'clock. Like. I literally was a ghost town and everything just <laughs> closed. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, where do people go? I guess it's like you work yeah. and then go the hell home. Go to the, like, where? Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's different. I mean, you got lunchtime and they shut down for, for a little while to get ready for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so me at my steakhouse, we don't even do lunch or dinner. We kind of just kind of keep it, you know, casual, yeah. uh, you know, just straight dinner. And we just might feed you a lot of food. <laughs> yeah. Oh, One of the things I love about Vince Young Steakhouse was I, you know, and I started <laughs> coming here to Austin around 2011 or 2012. And a lot of competition, steakhouse competitions moved into the area. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's the established steakhouses that are still the ones kicking the shit out of the newcomers these days. I thought that, that okay, you know, some yeah. of the big timers are coming in and they're just going to push everybody out. But Austin's very loyal um, to, you know, they like what they like. Yeah. And I like going to the bar at the Vince Young Steakhouse. <laughs> Shout out Leslie, my yeah. sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. She makes sure everybody's smiling over there. <laughs> everyone else likes that too. Where did you, where did you get that idea to, to go from football to a steakhouse? Well, you know, first of all, my team, you know, from Laura Brown and uh, Phil Brown, you know, they do a fabulous job of um, the service. You know, one mm -hmm. of the things that we, we're big on is the service and making sure you're smiling. We're, you're always right. Pretty much that, even though you mm -hmm. probably are wrong, we be like, no, <laughs> we've worked in restaurants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. You're, you're right. And yeah. then just the food, and then the ambiance of it, yeah. uh, live music. Sometimes we do, and we just want to make sure, you know, when you come to a down south steakhouse, it's like a really a steakhouse. You can enjoy yourself, eat f good food, and also experience whatever you may be experiencing. At one point of time, it was tough when we first opened up. It was because everybody see the name Vince Young yeah. and thinking it's more so just a... All You're right. going to be like the host stand. Yeah, it's, <laughs> just a, it's just a bar and some liquor and a steak. And mostly men, you know, that's a men thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we had to do a, a, another relaunching of letting people know that, you know, you can experience your... Letting the, the women know you can experience your anniversaries here. Uh, you can do um, Valentine's. You can do, you know, all these type of things yeah. so we can get the the women in there and saying once the women started to come, I mean, our steakhouse kind of really just kind of took off. So I was just you know, a blessing for my team to even see that, the information, and then we all come to the table like, what we need to do yeah. and relaunch and get, uh, you know, more so the women involved because the men were coming, but the women That's a lesson for coming. all entrepreneurs out there. If <laughs> yeah. you want the business to come, get the women to come. <laughs> the men will always come. I mean, women are harder to get there. We had uh, <laughs> Bob and I were talking about before this. Uh, another reason we like the steakhouse and we like that you, you're a genuinely nice person mm -hmm. is that we think everybody should have some sort of service background yeah. for at least six months of their lives. Oh, yeah. You should know what it's like 
to be treated like shit. <laughs> so that you I was a host, a busser, mm-hmm. a server. Like I did all the crap job, like all the jobs basically, and I know all ends of it and how you affect as a, a customer right. that person. Right. And so like I always feel like, oh, you just gotta, you gotta help us out. You gotta help them out a little bit. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you got, and especially if you have that experience. I mean, myself as well. I, I, I was, you know dealing with feet every day when I was working at the shoe company. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and me, as I was working there, I had a good time there getting to know people. I'm a people person again. And then one of the things that I would I didn't know New Balance was that big of a shoe when I was yeah. <laughs> yeah. selling shoes. With a name like, like New Balance. I never you went, yeah, exactly. you went to anywhere. New Balance. What are these? Yeah. Right. And now I'm wearing them like crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Comfortable, everything. You wear them more as you get later into your 30s yeah, yeah, yeah. and then your right. <laughs> 60s. Trust me. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This interesting segue into you being hit by a truck. Uh, <laughs> you, were, you were riding your bike when you were seven years old. And you were hit by it. You were struck by a truck, a car, a car. Okay, yeah. a, tr- a car. But well, yeah, we can say truck though. It sounds, sure, you were hit little... by. Yeah, you were the hit by. The car was hit by a truck. Yeah, <laughs> and Vince Young. The, the truck was actually hit by Vince Young. <laughs> exactly, that's what I mean. So yeah, sounds yeah. more better. Sounds yeah. more better. What happened? <laughs> um, and I was excited about uh, meeting a young lady and wasn't paying attention coming around the corner. Was excited to go home and let my sisters know that I finally got her number. And... At seven. Is that yeah, how old you were? I was seven to eight, one of the two. And That's awesome. It was a young lady that I thought was very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> a lady. A lady. <laughs> and uh, always had a little crush on her, one of those little young crushes on her, and wasn't paying attention, turned the corner, and got hit. So the funny, the, well, not too much funny, but the crazy part about that whole story is it was actually my elementary t- t- teacher who hits me. No way. <laughs> no way. Uh, so it's a bad, that's a bad day. So all she felt bad when she hit one of her students, and I was her, one of her favorite students. So it was, she felt so bad. Just that, that whole, that experience of us going through that, her coming to the hospital, she felt so bad. Oh, but. my goodness. <laughs> Were you, at the, when did you start the whole football thing? Did you do, like, Pop Warner football? Did you, when did you, like, Get, was it your idea? Did your parents, actually it did your was mom get you yeah idea? it was my, actually my mother's friend down the street because her son my one of my best friends Dalfa Coleman and Marvin Coleman was playing football and I was one of those kids who wasn't playing sports I was one of those kids that's coming home and was out there in the streets being bad um, you know just trying to you know be neighborhood, neighborhood being in the neighborhood and she not knowing where I'm at mom I'm like what, where's my son at <laughs> yeah. so uh, one day you know a friend of my mom said he can come play with the Brentwood Dolphins and um, I was like I don't know but wow well, I go try it out <laughs> so I went down with my with my friend Daffer Coleman and he was playing I think junior varsity or senior or whatever he was and I introduced me to it and that's how I got into it ever since then I was Playing football from a little league all the way up to. Did you take like right away? Did people like single you out as like, all right, this guy's got the size, the skills, the you know agility? Like, did you well, know right away? Like, no, it was just my first time, so it, was, it, it didn't it didn't really start to sink into me and my coaches until the third football game that it was like, okay, he has pr- some some pretty good talent. Yeah. And I was playing defense at the end, actually. Really? Uh, yeah, I started off at defense at the end. I I didn't start playing quarterback until my sophomore junior year in little league football when they moved me to quarterback because of my speed i guess i was because i played running back too and played free safety so i was just kind of just bouncing around till i figured out what i wanted to do and, and then i mean you bounced around for quite some time this would lead <laughs> into your senior year you could write a book and you actually could write a book on how heavily you were recruited by all, almost every college from you know for every university in florida notre dame <laughs> to how did you why, how you wound up in Texas, you've told me this story before, is really fascinating because you were you were committed to seven different universities. Exactly. How did they? How did how did UT land Vince Young? Well, first, I mean, my brother uh, cousin was going to Miami, and the Square Brothers, and um, they wanted me to come to Miami bad, and I wanted to go to Miami too. So every time I look at the thirty for thirty Miami deal, I'd be yeah. like. I think I should. I did a good job of not going because I don't think I would have made it if I was on that Miami team oh, yeah. <laughs> playing for Hurricanes back in the day. But, oh, dude, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, came to the schoolhouse. I mean, we actually started off at my high school uh, All-American game, the, the Army All-American game. So it was Casey Stutter, Larry Dibbles, 
Rod Wright and Apple Hardy, all these guys were going to Texas. So I was in that same on the same team with these guys. They all recruiting me mm-hmm. to come to Texas. So I was like, all right, my my visit is in two weeks. So I will take a look and see what's going on. So I get there, hands down, best you know everything all I needed to see it was at the Baylor game and and TJ Ford, silly self, a guy I grew up with playing basketball. Um, you know, he's like, well, don't y'all forget, it's the, the one of the best quarterbacks in the nation right he now. He in the this. building. Yeah. Yeah. He's in the building. So y'all make sure y'all give him the hard time to make sure he come to the University yeah. of Texas and got the standing ovation and everything. And I was pretty much like, hands down, that's where I wanted to go. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything <laughs> yeah. about that. They were like, here's John Rezig, senior, still playing <laughs> yeah. uh, JV soccer. <laughs> <laughs> he has no game at all yeah. and, uh, and, and a medium-sized penis. Everybody, <laughs> welcome John Rezig. Welcome Captain <laughs> John Rezig to the, to the team. <laughs> yeah, treat him well. No hazing period for this one. Yeah, that's funny. You, had to, you had to go and make the call to all the other people. You committed right then and there, and that was it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Miami was next week. I think, no, Arkansas was next week, then Miami after that. And uh, Houston Nutt was the coach at the time at Arkansas, and he wanted me to go there bad. And uh, Coach uh, David Lee was a quarterback coach. And I was almost going to Arkansas for a second, but after I saw what I, you know, at at Texas, I was pretty much like, I don't need to go nowhere else. Because if you go to all these visits, Mm -hmm. it started to confuse you at that Mm -hmm. age, and you're like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, and then I, I just said, forget it. I'm just going to go to Texas. I, I know my family can travel down 71 and get here at 290. Um, and then I'm, you can leave a legacy here. For one, you know, Texas haven't made it to the championship game. I think it was 32 or probably longer than that. It's been a while. And then I was looking at Miami. Okay, they go every year. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't you can accomplish some stuff, but you can't really accomplish anything. So I was like, okay, these are going to be Texas, um, Southern Miss, or Arkansas. And, you know, after I saw what I saw, <laughs> at, the, at the basketball and the thing about game, Austin, it was it. you know, there is no major sports franchise here, so you can't compete. Like, like <laughs> UT is it? It mm-hmm. is the game. It is the sport. Everybody has that crimson orange, like it's blood orange, blood orange. Pardon, <laughs> crimson's that just crimson. Crimson. That's like that's red. IU. That's IU. That's where we went. To <laughs> Shout out to IU. Shout Sorry. out to Egg. <laughs> Sorry, shameful Go plug Hoosiers. right there. <laughs> no, but yeah, cr- like they have the, the jerseys. <laughs> they wear it at like the Four Seasons on game day, like. Everywhere has that orange on game day. It is the sport. Yes, and, man. I mean, you go there. Bleed orange. And it took it took you a little while to get your feet grounded when you get there. Like, did you play much? Your, you red shirt, like red one shirt, year. And yeah. Then you... Red shirt was pretty much a scout team quarterback. Uh, you know, Coach Brown, you know, he wanted you to kind of get the feel of the, you know, the quarterback as mm-hmm. being at Texas is – Pretty much is an NFL quarterback. Yeah. Um, had opportunity to go at the uh, – it was underneath Chris Sims, um, Chance Mock, and Matt Norgan. So, Chris Sims, being the guy his, he, he, where he is, his dad, you know, you know big-time quarterback in the NFL for the Giants. And just to see, you know, the things that he went through mm-hmm. uh, when I was a red, red – uh, when I was a true freshman, you know, help me prepare myself more to things that can happen to me when I be able to start playing. And you said you didn't want to be redshirted, but no. it's good for you that you were. Yeah, I didn't want to be redshirted at all. I wanted to play very bad, but that's just me being the competitor that I am. But in the same time, uh, it definitely helped me and prepared me uh, for, you know, traveling, how to travel, you know, all these type of things, how to react, how to take care of your books and stay, stay, stay ahead, um, study hall, you know, just a lot of different things that – you wouldn't have in. learned in Miami. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would have been definitely yeah. dis- distracted yeah. right there. But it it taught me a lot of different things that I definitely would I needed to uh to 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 be, to be successful for one. But the biggest thing is is just watching Chris Sims as he was the quarterback at the University of Texas. Mm-hmm. I mean, the things that he went through when he won, and yep. then when he went through when he didn't win, yeah. it was it was like wow. So I was like, okay, they got to mentally mentally you have to prepare yourself for that. So that and was the media that, and, and everything oh man, that comes was, along with it. Losing, it crazy. winning, all. I mean, there was a point in time we lost to Texas Tech, and they was calling him Chrissy. I'm like, why are they calling him Chrissy? <laughs> 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 but it comes it's with Texas yeah, football, man. Exactly. <laughs> lace like, up, lace up your boots. Man. Oh man, it was tough. So it, it taught me a lot, though. You had mentioned the 30 for 30 episode on uh, Miami, which I think is one of the best. Also, yeah. the other one is what stands. Uh, to me, to be the, the greatest game of all time, which oh, you yeah. played in. It, and it, it, it is. USC, it's USC yeah. versus UT. And I know you get asked that about it all the time, but <laughs> you don't really give a shit. Uh, uh, 
you you played in one of the most <laughs> legendary games uh, in in the history of college football. Uh, that thirty for thirty is amazing. I think it doesn't get into something that I want to talk to you about. Is that how how did you personally prepare for a game like that? Were you were you in the zone already? Did you think much like, about it? Like Did you that, feel the pressure <laughs> that day? Are you talking to people? Are you like, no, I can't even, I can't no. even think right. You just let me focus on the game. And you're like, what are you doing? I mean, it was a point. Uh, you know, I was actually pissed off because I lost to Heisman, so I was kind of, oh, yeah. I was a little angry going Reggie into that Bush. game. And yeah, mm-hmm. and I remember that. The one. day bef- a couple of days before that Wednesday, a guy was talking a lot of shit. It was like, you know. Um, one of the, the the free safety name mm-hmm. is Bling or whatever like that. And he was going to – they kept just, you know, just talking a lot of shit. You, you ain't going to do shit. He's going to break you and put you in the ambulance and calling me all out my name, bitches, and all kinds of shit. And I'm looking at him like – I'm looking at my team, so my guys are with me, my guys are with me. I'm looking at him like, dude, let's get, let's get the hell out of here. Let's get to work. Um, so, you know, we left that day, that Wednesday, from, um, from the uh, restaurant and – we was just focused. Um, I was just ever since, like I like I told you, uh, after I lost that Heisman, I called a couple of the captains on the football team, and I was like, "Hey, man, get the guys together and tell them to get ready. We about to kick some ass." The day I was born, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's>, so <laughs> I was pissed the whole game. So you so. walked into a stadium that USC had won how many games in a row, including Thir- thirty-four, 34? including the former uh, BCS Bowl or yeah, Rose championship Bowl, whatever. national championship. championship mm-hmm. is yeah. the, the fourth quarter. How did you feel about? I mean, you put the team on your back at that point. I mean, that no- was whatever it took. Whatever it took. I, uh, again, I think you know God was definitely behind me because I don't understand all that energy that I had mm-hmm. because that when that night was over, with, everybody was like, "Vince, why you didn't go out?" I was like, "Dude." You seen that game? (laughs) (laughs) I am emotionally spent. Done. I went to sleep. Me and my my wife, she took me to sleep. Then she did what she did, and I was out of there. (laughs) She's like, I kind of like to hang out a little bit. Like, nothing? No. No, no, baby. Rock me to sleep. When I mean literally rock me to sleep. Rock me to sleep, and I was done. Uh, done. That is awesome. Before before you went back uh, to to crash, you said something that has become your legend. Your your, <laughs> your hallmark, and, and that was what were you bringing back to? So what oh yeah, bringing a trophy all the way back to Austin, Texas, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to add to that. No. I just want to hear him say it. He did. He said it. I have a stupid. This is a stupid aside. <laughs> we had my, Matthew McConaughey come into this office once to do a little pep talk of his own for yeah. our company. People don't know this. We asked Matthew McConaughey to yeah. come in and give a. <laughs> Uh, uh, a pep talk, yeah. a motivational, motivational speech, speech to the speech. office. office. This was a couple months ago. Um, <laughs> and he just said yes. And, yeah. he, and we were like, oh, he's not going to show up. And he did. He showed up in the middle of the day, just kind of wandered in here and gave the employees a pep talk. And I asked Matthew afterwards, I, <laughs> uh, honestly, I was kidding. And he was like, sure. Um, I was like, why'd you do this? He's like, because you asked politely, man. And I was like, Plain and simple. how wow. awesome is that is Southern hospitality. And I remember I did ask very another nicely. Austin, another Austin guy. When I ran into him at Uchiko, I was like, you know, we'd love to. He's like, I'll oh, chive, like the chive. I was like, would you like to come in and give a motivational speech? He's like, just, you know, my kids in, in yeah. football camp, I'd love to. Mm-hmm. And I thought he was messing with me. But did he, he gave you guys a motivational speech. Was it before the game? Before the or? game. Uh, that was... The week of the week was practicing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did it. We did one before the week before the practice. So he always come to practice. He's a huge fan of the football mm-hmm. game. Still, love his university. Yeah. Love his university. Um, I mean, just a great guy. I have opportunity to always hang out with him. He can cook a mean steak. I mm-hmm. can respect to that. But yeah, different down down earth guy. And and when he's you know speaking to him, he's he's coming from the heart, uh, going off pretty much his experiences in life. And want the, want, want the guys to know, man, this is a huge opportunity, man. And go grab it. Go take it. So, um, and, and once, you, once you're a player, when you hear that um, from Matt, one of, one of the big time, you know, actors out mm-hmm. here. And, and then he's like one of our own. Uh, when you hear that, man, it's, it, it just motivates you to go kick some butt too as well. It is amazing. That is yeah. how supportive everyone in Austin, Texas is of yeah. each other. Yeah. And that's what we found being now we've been here almost four uh, maybe yeah, three yeah. and a half, three and a half years. Yeah, four years. Everyone Close really enough. is nice. Like I, we, like for example, we asked Vision to come in and do a podcast. Yeah. He was like, "Sure, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll walk there, I'll walk yeah. there. Yeah. on the yeah. way, baby. Yeah. Like, way. That's really nice of you, Matthew McConaughey. People like that. That Southern <laughs> hospitality. But you, 
you took that hospitality into your NFL career because we had something, a conversation we had struck me talking about some of the bad boy quarterbacks out there. And, <laughs> uh, and however you were perceived by the media, you were not a bad boy. You took yeah. your lineman out on Thursday. You were good about being in the NFL. You, you, oh, had yeah. a, you understood you had a job to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it was a definitely a, a, a what, again, the University of Texas and Coach Brown have taught me so much and prepared me for that. Is this when I got there, I just had a head coach that just wasn't on the same page as me. So yeah. what I did, you know, I had guys like Steve McNair before he passed away was my mentor. And he told me what the things you need to do to be a successful quarterback. You know, you have to be in the film room. You have to study. You have to always be in shape. Um, you have to be at these um, um, these sweet events that these people coming in and buying all these sweets to come support you guys. Mm -hmm. You have to be the first guy there to show your face and say thank you. You know, um, you know all these little small things. You know, that's some of the things that had taught me uh, um, when I was playing ball at, at UT. That Coach Brown, what he do before the season started for our one of our spring mm -hmm. games. He opens it up to the public for those fans out there that don't get tickets, mm -hmm. can't afford them. He has it. He let them come to our spring game for free, and then before the spring game, we sign each and last one of their autographs and tell them thank you um, for just their support. And when I saw that from Coach Brown, I was like, man, you know, if Coach Brown is teaching us this right now to the, at this day, this stuff is going to lead over to the NFL or in the community, mm -hmm. wherever you wherever you go, you know, make sure you you know be nice, be humble, because you never know what that fan or that person might be going through in life. Or that fan might can't even afford to even go to that game, yeah. and this is their only only time to this say is, hello yeah. to hello to you and and you know get to hang out with you and smile a little bit. So that type of stuff you know helped me when I got into the NFL, and, and along with Steve McNair, of teaching me, you know, the things of how to be a quarterback and how to carry yourself off the football field. Yeah, and it comes down to some of the basic principles that you're talking about. It's exactly. like you know you have to be humble and you're gonna have to work hard. Yes. Like, uh, unfortunately, there's and we we tell everybody yeah. that in the. You know, when we go to, you know, I lecture at, at, at universities or whatever, mm -hmm. like, you got to say, you know, there's no silver bullet in the tech in industry. You know, we didn't slip. In, in the industry. Yeah. In, <laughs> in right. industry, in you don't industry. slip and fall into any sort of success. success. Yeah. No. Uh, you, you, you've got, you're, unfortunately, you're going to have to work for it. And the millennials are like, I don't know. But look at the Kardashians. They don't have to do anything. And you're like, yeah. uh, Kardashians aside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> once in a lifetime. Once, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's one silver bullet. Um, but, but yeah, I think that that's, that's something we've seen with you that we really admire about you because uh, I, I think you're, I, you're a good human and you care about Austin. You're very active in uh, some of the low-income housing here and you're active now at the University of Texas. Like, yeah. Can you explain your yeah. role there? Well, you just came from your office at UT. Yeah, I just came. You know, he's we get, dressed up. <laughs> we got <laughs> two, two, big, yeah. we had yeah. two big events coming up, uh, so we was get prepared for that. You know, everybody about to leave for the holidays, so everybody trying to squeeze everything in yep. for everybody to take off. But yeah, uh, I'm a development officer, so I pretty much go to the uh, first generation, you know, communities where you know people don't even don't even touch, don't even see mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, and what I'm happy about, about the institution at the university, that Dr. Vincent and uh, uh, former President Powers be, um, started an a initiative program for, for us to go out into the community and help those kids and those parents figure out how to get to college. Um, a lot of time, you know, in your, in your family, you don't have nobody that went to college. So these kids out here, like, how do you even get there? Yeah, yeah. Like, what, uh, what, like, what, what are some steps? They the can steps, take? exactly. Yeah. So, uh, why I'm happy about when the university has put these programs in the high schools and um, and uh, um, elementaries, as well as on campus to to help these uh, these young kids understand how to get to college. You know, me being a first generation kid to see that. You know, go over to them and speak to them like, hey, man, make sure you're taking your tests on time, making sure you're filling out the applications. Uh, even though you probably don't have the money, it's so much money out there mm. that can help you get to college as long as you're meeting these deadlines that you see and these type of things. So when you go out there, and then, you know, the parents probably don't know how to fill out the application. Mm. You know, don't be embarrassed about that because my mom didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't know how to fill it out, but I had opportunity to go because I did everything paying attention to my counselors or whoever they were maybe was there to help me figure out how to do it. And then I did it. So now what I'm happy about the UT, 
we have programs into the schools now and the charter schools. This is a relatively new program, yeah. though. Is, yeah, it's been around since so, 2006. Yes. Yeah, I mm-hmm. mean, this is, this is something you're really on the on the on the cusp okay, of, yeah. of this new program. I think it's so cool. Just asking, you know, a lot of people don't understand that parents don't know how to help, you know, fill out the application and get it in on time for their right. kids. And it's yeah, you should you should arm people with the knowledge to to do that. It's like I always. I always said, you know, I went through a liberal arts college, and uh, I, I, it was very uh, good experience for me. Yeah. The one thing that it never taught me was how to balance a checkbook. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, and I always why thought, nobody teach why that? does nobody teach these kids <laughs> how to balance a yeah. checkbook? Yes. Geometry. That I never out. had to, <laughs> Yeah, I never learned. Mm. My parents tried, it never taught me. My dad just said, son, you're just going to have to be real rich because you are a mess. <laughs> yeah. um, but those are the basic tools of, of success, and sometimes it comes down to, to filling out a form. And I, I love, I, I'm sure it's very rewarding for you to have come from the – Past that you did oh, yeah. to be able to foster the growth of of and see now the kids that you helped become successful. It's just all the information, yeah. man. I mean, it's so much information out there. Uh, you know, I just want you know our young ladies and young men out there in the world know, man. Just you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you did make a mistake, you still got to clean up that mistake. You know, me, I have made some mistakes in my lifetime, but thank God. You know, guys like Sean Abu, the guys that came into mm-hmm. my lifetime and taught me some stuff and some things, as well as my university and some other mentors that I have that taught me a lot of different things about um, in the financial world, the business world, and all these different, you know, things. Because, you know, as an athlete, you trying to be the best athlete. But when you say it's all said and done, now I don't know, all those kids you went to school with, they have this whole – they way ahead of you right now in mm-hmm. the business world yeah so now what you got to do is now is well, all that time you have from trying to be the best athlete that you're not trying to be that best athlete no more all that time now you want to be the best businessman <laughs> so all that time you did yeah. you got to put it into the being the best businessman you're going to go shake some hands yeah. you're gonna have to travel you're gonna have to take some notes you're gonna have to read it's it's it's, it's a lot <laughs> <But> <laughs> to that, try to catch up, yeah. try to catch up back up with those students you went to school with, yeah. uh, and, and you know, and then get back into building a relationship with folks and things like that. So it's a lot, but at the same time, if you can do it of being the best athlete, you can definitely be, you know, do it do it as well and being a businessman or wherever you want to be in life, you can do it. But you have to put the time in. Can't you do it? Can't nobody do it but you? Yeah. You know, can't nobody else do it but you? So you gotta, you know, you know, roll up your sleeves. You gonna have to wake up at six thirty if that is what it is. See, I got a kid now, so I'm up now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my six year old, my six year old, like daddy, yeah. let's go, baby. Yeah, no, no, no special treatment for no daddy. No special treatment, like yeah. you know, get up, punch you in the face, whatever. Like, okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> good one, good one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get that out of you though. So you know, you know, it's just all about life. But you know, uh, it, it's it, it was tough, tough, tr- tough transition. But again, like I said, just having the right mentors and the right people around you to help you, you know, yep. build and get, do them things. I, I mean, I'm truly blessed as well to have that. You do. Shout out to Sean. Uh-huh. Big Sean. Yeah, and he's good Good people uh, <laughs> here in Austin as well. So ta- let's talk about some of the, uh, you know, you're expanding your business enterprise right now. Or can you talk about some of the stuff that you're doing right now? Yeah, I man, just got into the 18-wheeler company, Transport Import. So my brother-in-law, he... He was involved. He was in the army. So when he retired, that's what he did. And I didn't even know he had his broker license. I'm like, he came into the in, into the living room one day one Thanksgiving. He's like, dude, I got my broker license. I'm like, well, that's all you need right there. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You get all the deals right there. So I'm like, okay, let's start our own company. So we, you know, did went through the details and he he coached me and kind of taught me some things. Got me studying and reading, reading about the Austin Associ- Association is right here in Austin. Yep. You know, just studying U- U.S. ship right here. I mean, just a lot of UT people, the Port of Houston, just getting involved with a lot of people, taking my time and meeting everybody and learning the business and then starting the company. Um, it started, it's, we're about to get ready to lunch. We haven't lunched yet, but uh, we're about to get ready to lunch. Just got our website finished. Uh, got everything we need from the LLC business-wise, paperwork, you know, copyright, land, you know, all the stuff you got to no, do just to yeah. start a business. It, it's tough, but once it gets going, it's awesome. The, <laughs> You're right, exactly. The, the wealthiest person in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So Welcome. that's going pretty good. So, and then now I'm, I'm about to yeah. take my real estate license. So, uh, so you told me about yeah. this. You're about to take your real, you're How? never too old at 33 years old yeah. 33, <laughs> to sure. go back to school and even get your real estate license. How hard has that been to learn all that stuff? Like, 
it's, months, it's, year. Like, how long you been at that? Has, it haven't been too hard. I mean, uh, again, mentors and people that I'm doing about to do business with have mm-hmm. kind of, you know, made it smaller for what I need to study, uh, okay. what helped them pass, and things like that. And then I took my classes online. It, it makes it easier now. The, the 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 government, the world, makes it a little bit easier mm-hmm. for you to mm-hmm. get your thing. So I went on online, took my classes. Took me nothing but probably three weeks or yeah. or less. Um, got your classes online. Now you just go take your test. <laughs> it's awesome. You're, it's just you're never too old to expand your horizons and to, to, to keep continue learning. And I know there's a lot of young it's, people listening to this podcast. And I hope you're taking this to heart because, you know, you're going to have to work for it. And, oh, yeah. uh, and nobody's <laughs> going to give you shit. Nothing. Uh, no, yeah. In general. At all. Nothing. Uh, we're not, uh, you're not going to let you out of here today until we talk about the fact that you have your own holiday. <laughs> January 10th. January 10th. It's coming up. I'm pretty sure. How do you get ready in Houston for your own it, holiday? It is Vince Young. It's Vince Day. Young Day. The senator declared it. It is a, a senator. <laughs> that means when a the senator key, declares yeah. a holiday, that means that it is etched in stone somewhere. It yeah. is in fact. Yeah. It goes on calendars in schools. <laughs> if I had a School tombstone, calendars. I would be like, I have a holiday named yeah. after yes. me. Yes. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. it. What else do you do? How do you feel about this? Yeah. I'm very happy, man. I'm very happy. <laughs> That's That's my day off, everybody. My day off, everybody day off. We're all going January 10th is official holiday. Official holiday. So, yeah, man, I get an opportunity to go back to the city and kind of just travel the city, hang out with, you know, different, stop in different schools. And, um, you know, it's just like a big celebration of a lot of your hard work, you know. Of, 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 you know, being a Houstonian and they just recognize you and saying, hey, man, we're very proud of you. Man, I'm yeah. proud of you. That's, <laughs> that's maybe the coolest thing we've ever heard. Bob and I couldn't stop talking about, like, you know, he's got us. He's on holiday. Yes. I'm like, I'm aware <laughs> yeah. of that. Uh, yeah, but we were talking earlier, but I, I had to ask you, this is a random aside. We were talking about, like, you know, a restaurant. You want, to, want people to work there so they understand what it's like. Mm-hmm. As a football player, NFL quarterback, what do you think is a disconnect between, like, fans and players? Like, what is something you wish – fans would understand about the players Mm -hmm. or the game something they just they never understood like do you have anything like that experience Uh, well uh i mean this morning i was you know watching a video of um uh denzel washington i don't know if y'all saw it this morning yes yeah he was he was saying basically um the media is getting so out of line out of way out of context they are they are forgetting why they want to be a reporter yeah they're not reporting right. the truth no more. They just trying it's to be. It's about getting to a story first, first. right yeah. or wrong, true or false. Yeah. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. Hmm. Mm. So uh, what do you do? That's the great question. <laughs> what is the long-term effect of too much information? We live in a society now where it's just first. Who cares? Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who we destroy. We don't care if it's true. Just say it. Sell it. Well, yeah, I mean, he was so on point with it because, I mean, people out there in the world, I mean, because that TV, that box, they can go out and say anything about any of us mm-hmm. sitting right here. Mm-hmm. And it's way off the truth. It's not hitting the facts, whatever it may be. Uh, but, again, like you just said, Bob, it's just they trying to be the first one to report it. But if you're going to be the first one to report it, um, it goes back to what we said. Where is the hard work in finding out what's the truth? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, me, I don't mind you saying anything about me, but as long as you're saying the truth, because now I don't have to go so hard of fighting people's perceptions of who they, who I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know who I am. You know what I mean? So I, every day I walk, just like you guys say, how y'all respect who I am. I walk like this every day. Mm-hmm. I work very hard for this every day. And then for someone to come in and say, oh, Vincent doesn't work hard, yeah. or, or Vincent drinks too much, or... This, whatever, whatever, whatever. I mean, like, dude, first of all, get to know me first and come talk to me face to face if you want to pour anything yeah. about me mm-hmm. and then do that. And that's what being a reporter is. And I'm so happy for one of our uh, icons, Denzel Washington, um, said that interview and it and, and made a lot of sense um, to them. They was like, hmm. Even the reporter was like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing because, they, yeah, they, they, they push their own narrative on onto you, and we, we, we know what that's like a, a lot. And I think some of the ways you were portrayed in the media were just not as so off base because you worked hard and you were a nice person. But oh, it's, yeah. it's that's not good enough. Being a nice person doesn't move print. 
You know, no, yeah. you, oh, yeah. controversy moves yeah. print. But it What's should. What's the provocative story? Yeah, and that's yeah. Sure so they're always going to take a salacious angle. If you give them a whiff of it, yeah. then they'll go that direction because right. it, it, it gets clicks. Yeah. And uh, and we know that. And we're the chive and we've never done it. We're the only people I think that do, do not do it in the entertainment industry. Yeah. We don't do awesome. politics. We don't do snark. We don't, we don't uphold people to ridicule unless mm. they are, are upholding themselves to ridicule. Exactly. 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 Like, exactly. This there is you go. proof. This right is here. It, right this here. Is fine. Yeah. We don't just think this. <laughs> yeah. That behind closed doors, they're did a you, moron. Did you hear what Kanye <laughs> yeah. just said This today. guy's exactly. a moron. All right. Let and, it, um, and it's so simple like that, man. If people can start thinking like that, I mean, if 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 you did it, you know, if I did it, I'm going to be the first to be like, hey, mm -hmm. man, listen, that's all me right there. Yeah. Just like when I got a DWI, I, I didn't let nobody else go off and say, this what happened. I called and did my own damn thing. I, I put out the, the letter out yep. there like, hey, kids, because I, I deal with kids, and I felt really bad because I felt like a hypocrite mm -hmm. because I'm telling y'all to do one thing, and then mm -hmm. I'm out here being misbehaving, messing up as well. Yeah. So I felt so bad. I had to make sure that the whole world, because I know a lot of people follow me, millions of people want to know what Vince is doing. Yeah. First thing I did was like, hey, you know, everybody, I really do apologize. It was my mistake, you know. I owned up to my mistake, you know, and told the people that's what's this what happened, and then I had to go through the diligence of going through court and doing all that mess. But at the same time, when you make a mistake, anybody in the world, I hope, um, I hope you own up to it. And definitely, if you want guys like me in the in the in the in the public eye a lot, mm -hmm. uh, people want to hear what or people follow you and want to see you do good or bad. Mm -hmm. You have to be that one to be the first yep. to get it out there, so no people can't speculate and do all the extra stuff, you know. So it's a good lesson in life. Every time I fuck up, I feel like it's a, the perfect thing to be like, "Yep, yeah. on me. I I, mm -hmm. I got egg on my face, my yeah. forehead." For I just deny, deny, deny. Yeah. deny. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my kid. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got when my eyes. No, no. <laughs> Yeah. And, and when it ain't the truth, what I do hate, when it ain't the truth, you got to go in and say something about it. I'm like, why well, have to even acknowledge, acknowledge it. that? You know, it was you, like, yeah, yeah, it makes it more of a story. Anytime mm -hmm. you saw me you did anything, it was a good or bad, I got to be the first person on them to say, hey, that's true. But when somebody is speculating later and just saying something and starting some mess, I don't understand my lawyer to this day and my, some of my pe people, business partners and stuff, they be like, yeah, you got to do it. I'm like, why? This is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is nothing to even talk about, but what they talk, let them talk about it, that yeah. stuff on their own and then it's going to make them look bad in the long run. Yeah. Like, you have, you have to waste your energy and time on something. On something. It has yeah. nothing to do with you. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. Yeah, but it, exactly. But like you said, once you screwed up, you have to. You do have to take control of the narrative, or exactly. it will take control of you. So you gotta, you gotta lead out with like mea culpa. This is yeah. it. Not me, because that's not my kid. No, yeah. <laughs> Bob, if I mentioned uh, anything to do with girls in general, girls and the kid isn't mine. <laughs> not Josh's whatever. problem. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't know what you're you talking about. DNA I test? was in Wisconsin. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so, not that you, I was in Wisconsin. I was always that was in it. I was Madison. At, Madison. Madison. Uh, in the suburbs. Yeah. yeah. I was at Mars Cheese Castle. The cheese was amazing. I was at Mars Cheese Castle. Have you been to Mars Cheese Castle? I was there not fostering uh, yeah. that kid. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this brings us to our post-apocalyptic questions. A We're, perfect segue. Yeah, perfect segue to the end of the world scenario that we like to end our show on. And uh, and Bob's going to take it away with, with Vince Young, the, the post-apocalyptic questions. It's a silly segment, and it's just basically, just to get you in the mindset, it's basically, <laughs> in a world befallen some tragedy, it is leaving you, Vince Young, the lone man standing. And so it's, uh, it's lonely, kind of dire. Not the happiest of times, so that's sort of the, the mindset you're in in this place. Mm -hmm. uh, the first question, the lob softball, is if you happen to have one movie on DVD only to watch for the rest of your days, what is that movie to oh you? Oh, my God. Doesn't even have to be your favorite. Just one you, like, yeah. you have to have it. Do you have want it. uplifting? Do you want a long yeah. one that you can make little discoveries about? Do you want to laugh? In, yeah. in, you know, maybe, maybe humor is your thing. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking of like the worst horrific movies, like Saw. <laughs> it really brings yeah. me out of a funk. Nothing me too. Like that. Stephen King's Man, It does it for me every one time. Movie one. You know. Yeah. They all float down yeah. here. Float down here. I have to. I have to. So I have to be laughing because that's me. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. goofy. So it has to be how high or. Or Friday, one of the Fridays. Ooh, the, the, the first Friday. You have to go with the original. Oh, my God. You want to watch that. Yeah, you talk about on, the Chris. last movie to watch. I got to laugh, so I know ain't nothing else to watch. <laughs> 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 so 
I don't know if I'd watch Friday. Isn't that about you know going out that night? Do you not, and you're not. Does it remind you that you Chris know? Chris Tucker, no, that's, Friday. that's just what they're on the porch on all day. Stoop. Yeah, Chris Tucker. I just, that's Chris. Chris like, funny. And you know this, this man. man. Yeah, you got just, knocked the fuck. Yeah, yeah Chris. <laughs> like all day. I can like think of the lines. They're all flooding my yeah, head right now. So or good. life. Cetric. Have you seen Life? I like Life too. So Wait, oh, what's that? With all the comedians with uh, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, Eddie Murphy. Oh man, Martin. You know he gonna eat his own cornbread. Yeah. You know. Oh. I'm all high about no. Yeah. No, you can't have his cornbread. Get your own partially cornbread, yeah. Yeah. That life. Get your own cornbread, man. (laughs) Go fuck you. (laughs) Hey girl, you gonna eat your cornbread. You talking to me? Yeah, I think you're talking to you. Um no, not not at all. Um, I want you to have it. Hey, no, hi, don't, don't don't pass your cornbread to him. That's your cornbread. Ray, I'm a grown man. Okay, I'm not gonna eat this cornbread if he wants the cornbread. Damn it! Have the cornbread. Now, if he wants some cornbread, let him go up to the front and get his own portion of cornbread. That's your cornbread. Fuck him. Hey, man, he gonna eat his cornbread. All right? Fuck you, Ray. Maybe I ought to eat your cornbread. Oh, motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree going to begin up in here on your ass right now. It's, a, it's one of the greatest exchanges in <laughs> cinema history. Martin Lawrence, hey, Eddie Murphy, Murphy like talking it. about cornbread and its price. It's funny. Uh, the it. second question. It's a very silly, very silly one. It's, uh, <laughs> a, you're, you're a happily married man, right? Mm. As far as I know. there. It's Let's just say... The wife didn't make it. She, I'm sorry. Is that abrasive? <laughs> Too forward? <laughs> she took one for the team, but she says, Vince, you need to carry on the legacy. <laughs> if there happens to be one other woman on the planet who is a prototypical woman, someone you're like, good stock, smart, mm-hmm. brains, good looks. May, I don't know what you choose. At any oh time in space, could be from the early 1900s, doesn't matter. Serena Williams is off the table. Oh, yeah, too obvious. We've taken her off the table because she, she does represent. I'm taking Joan of Arc off the table, too, Dang. just because I feel like you're going to go historical. Be like, well, she was Joan, amazing. She was, Joan too. Joan of Arc, yeah. not boring. What sucks to be terrible with Joan of Arc. Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, the, the mattress side, too. Yeah. You'd be set on fire. Oh. Yeah, too soon? Okay, <laughs> never mind. Too soon? Too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> Oh my God! That's, really y'all got some tough ones. I know. Ooh, Who'd be a girl you? next door? Yeah, that's a celebrity. Well, you know, know who I liked? Uh, who's um? I'm blanking on her name. Chick from uh, seventy, the seventy show. Dive. Ashton Kutcher's wife, Mila Kunis. Oh yeah. <laughs> she's like, she's like that it girl, and she's been in so oh. many movies. My wife is telling me she's like, she's not that great of an actress, but she's in every fucking movie. She's adorable. She must be. She's obviously hot, but she must be like a really cool chick. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like she must. Well, she does the Jim Beam commercials now. She yeah. she's a whiskey drinker. Why, why did she win them over? Yeah. I mean, like she must just be like this chick is on the level. I'll say mm-hmm. Erica Badu. Yeah, talent. Yeah. You want you want someone who can who can entertain you mm-hmm. when you're the only person left on earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. I like her character. Her Rihanna, them too. Mm-hmm. Is my my toe. My yeah, toe. Re, shout out to Riri. Riri. Yeah. I, you know, I just don't think she'd ever have a kid with me that I could deny <laughs> yeah. having a, a kid with us. I'm a kid. Yeah. Uh, the Does last it... one is a philosophical <laughs> question. Uh, let's just say in your solitude, you're drifting into madness a little bit. <laughs> you pissed. start to hallucinate having a conversation with one person, and it can be any one person throughout time again. Who's somebody you've always wanted to like sit down with, pick their brain, just have a, an awesome conversation? With? DMX all day. Oh, oh <laughs> dude, dude! Oh my God, that's I love, I, DMX. I love that. Middle school flooding back. Yeah. DMX yeah. man all day. Yeah, I can, I can have a conversation with him all day. I can. I can see it. I haven't met him. <laughs> have I haven't you, met him yet, but I went to his concerts. You haven't talked. You haven't met him. Never though. met him yet, but I went to his concerts, supported him a lot, but never met him so. One of them days it happened. You're gonna meet him. I'm gonna make sure that you happened. know he. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. I think he came out with like a Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer Christmas <laughs> song, but it was yeah. like DMX. You know, like yeah, right. I bet it was jamming too. <laughs> yeah, I, I I bet it's fine. I want to see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear all about that. So, I uh, we can't thank Vince Young enough for being here. This has been amazing. If you're on the Chive homepage, yeah, you have to go to Vince Young Ten. That's his. His Twitter Twitter handle, it's, yeah, and you can click on it from the Chive homepage. If you have not been to Vince Young Steakhouse, it is a true gem uh, in Austin, as well as the man who's joining us, 
Is it in Houston as well, or is it just Austin? Like? Yeah, we about to get psh, about to get ready to open there, some right? in Houston and Dallas. There you so. go. Oh, there you go. Congratulations! It's, it's such a well-run joint. Every I, I always go back there because the people there are kind and respectful, and I'm yeah. always right, and they're always wrong. It feels good. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, you thank you for coming in. You you sure, man. you're one of the the rare gems in Austin that we mm. want to talk to, and and it's it's funny because you shouldn't meet your heroes because. Uh, you know, most of the time they turn out to be assholes, um, <laughs> but you're really a good guy. I appreciate it. Yeah. And, uh, we it's a lot of whoopings, for- butt whoopings. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, DMX is totally going to be worth it. We should play yeah. it all. Uh, and some everybody, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> <You. laughs> Vince Young, everybody, thank you. And you can catch the uh, Chai Pies at the Chai Podcast the chai. every see. Thursday on Podcast One. That's Podcast O N E dot com. Thanks to the millions of Chivers who tune in to listen to uh, our back and forth and thanks to Vid Chunk for joining <laughs> us uh, Merry Christmas and enjoy the musical stylings yes Mr. DMX <laughs> <And> eat, <laughs> eat up <laughs> I hope we find that real listen, but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all come on put off the red nose reindeer out of every shiny nose uh, and if you ever saw him you would even say it close come on come on all of you